All right, guys, so today I'm going to go over and break down my new O2 trainer from my brother, Boss Root. Let's get into it. All right, so before we get into the video, I want to make sure that you guys maintain your support for the channel. So if you haven't subscribed to it, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification. And also, if you like this video at the end, please hit the like button. Stay tuned at the end of the video because I'm going to give you a special announcement that only the ones that stay for the entire video will get. So stay tuned for that. Now, let's get into the overall outcome of why we're trying to increase our ability to breathe, right? So I got the O2 trainer. I called my man boss up and I just asked him, I said, man, how's that O2 trainer? I want to utilize it. I know I have some guys that have some respiratory issues and we want to increase our ability to take in oxygen and utilize it efficiently. So he's like, no problem. He sent me over the new O2 trainer, which I'm highly, highly impressed with the ability to bring up your oxygen utilization and to bring up the respiratory limitations that, that I've had and that a lot of my fighters have. Now, the reason why I say this is because a respiratory issue negates or allows or doesn't allow the athlete to adequately bring in oxygen and let off co2 now that's a problem because if we do not do that we're not going to have the energy output that we need with fighters that they're kyphotic in nature they're rolled forward they have bad posture in general and a lot of them don't know how to use their diaphragm so we're going to use the o2 trainer to allow them to increase the diaphragmatic breathing responses and just increase the strength of the diaphragm so Again, why do you want to train your diaphragm, right? You want to increase your ability to take in oxygen for one. You want to increase the ability to let off CO2, which is that negative byproduct. The more CO2 that you let in the body, the more lactic buildup, the more lactic buildup, the less energy output, and then your muscles become more acidic and you can't produce any more energy throughout the entire time of the fight or competition, whatever have you, okay? improves on your posture right when you're breathing better you're increasing your posture you're increasing your spinal alignment that's going to help with movement control that's going to help with your overall biomechanics for any sport possible it doesn't have to just be for combat sports all right increases energy production now if you can increase your oxygen utilization you can bring in oxygen you're going to get more oxygen let off to the mitochondria for energy output so to increase your your ATP to increase your energy overall, we need to make sure that we have that oxygen put in. So increasing your ability to take in an oxygen with a stronger and more efficient diaphragm is going to help with that. All right. And lastly, we want to increase recovery from the overall training, right? The more oxygen we can get in, the better blood flow, the better blood flow, the more nutrients to the working tissue, which will allow you to recover from your training session. So there's a large amount of, of benefits that you're going to get from increasing your diaphragm strength and your resistance to fatigue. All right, so when it comes down to the training, I'm gonna give you two examples that Boss has given me, and then I'm gonna give you one more that's going to enhance not only your strength of the diaphragm, but also the fatigue resistance. All right, so the first one, right? The first example based off of the O2 trainer breakdown of Boss Rutan's overall O2 trainer volume two is gonna be 30 breaths in total you want to work around three to four minutes long. You're going to start with either cap nine, 10 or 11, right? And it's very simple to do. You put it in your mouth like a mouthpiece, right? You're going to inhale as you raise up into a natural posture. And as you do that, you're going to try to utilize your diaphragm and blow out your, your rib cage. So exactly when you breathe in, all the muscles are going to expand in your trunk area, increasing the diaphragm strength the intercostal muscles, the obliques, the abs, all of that back there. Then you're gonna take the mouthpiece out, blow all the CO2 out nice and easy and come back down into a flexion state where you're getting all that air out as much as possible with no resistance. All right, so the goal here is again, you wanna do around three to four minutes total, all right? You're gonna increase the load each week by bringing down the cap size. So for the first week, you can do cap number 11, the second week, you can go cap 10, third week, cap nine. Then you can deload and go week four with a cap 11. And then you're going to increase it again for another three week wave, nine, eight and seven on your week seven. So on and so forth until you get to about two minutes or less than three minutes. And then you want to increase the overall sets. OK, so 
or if you're doing 30 repetitions, you wanna increase that by you know, 10 to even 12 more repetitions. So instead of doing 30, you're gonna be doing 40 or 42, okay? Now, the goal here is again, like I said, stay below three minutes, then you wanna switch to two times a day, all right? So you're gonna do two times a day for three to six weeks. Once you get efficient in your breathing and you feel that you've accomplished what you wanted to in that particular uh, mechanism of diaphragmatic breathing, then you can go ahead and maintain that with one time per week as a maintenance work, okay? Now, exercise number two is going to be 30 breaths again, but the goal here is to work through the back. So now we're not breathing through the front and the sides, we're actually trying to increase the expansion of the posterior side of your diaphragm, okay? So you're gonna do the same concept, three to four minutes long, working in caps nine, 10, or 11 to start off. And what you're gonna do is the same concept, right? The goal again is to increase the expansion of your back muscle. So you'll feel it, especially if you haven't done it ever, right? So what you're gonna do there is the opposite of the example number one, where as I go down into a flexion, I'm going to inhale. So I'm inhale, breathing through that mouthpiece, increasing the expansion of the back or the posterior side of the diaphragm. And then you're gonna let the mouthpiece come out of your mouth and blow out as you stand back up, all right? Make sure that you keep a tall posture, shoulder blades are down and packed, okay? Now, example or exercise number three is gonna be what's called maximal expansion breathing with the O2 trainer. Now, this is going to increase the fatigue resistance because now we're not just putting one cap on, we're actually putting two caps on with resistance. So instead of being able to blow out the CO2 with ease or exhalation with ease, we're actually gonna have to forcefully exhale with a little bit more resistance, okay? So the protocol is going to be inhale at four seconds and exhale six seconds. The exhale is gonna be a forceful exhale because you are gonna get resistance and you're keeping the mouthpiece in. You're gonna stay supine so your back is flat, preferably your knees up so you have a flat back. And you're gonna start off with the inhale. So the left side of the mouthpiece is gonna have a nine, 10 or 11 cap. And the exhale is gonna be on the other side is gonna be an eight, seven or six cap. So it's gonna be a little bit more resistance on the exhalation. All right, now you're gonna do that for two minutes total. Once you get good at that, you can increase the time under tension. So you can increase from four seconds to all the way up to six to eight to 10 seconds. And your exhale, you wanna make sure that you're maintaining six to 10 seconds as well. So you can work into a box breathing uh, protocol at that particular time. The maximal expansion, the goal there is to increase the sympathetic nervous system response. So this is something you want to do right before your training. So this is gonna enhance your ability to do work inside the training room. Whether it be sparring, whether it be weight training, whatever have you, you can do this right before, it's a two minute go, and then you're gonna be ready to go for your training. Not only that, is you're enhancing the ability to take in oxygen and let off CO2, which is most important, all right? So, there you guys have it. If you wanna find out more details on my particular training methodologies and protocols, you can check out the mentorship down below. The link is in the description. It's a one-time fee, you'll get access for life. So make sure you go ahead and do that if you are a coach or an athlete looking to learn some of the methods and protocols, the systems like this that I use with my athletes and myself. Check it down below. Again, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification, hit the like button. See you again next time, peace.